what are we doing today? It's windy. And we're looking at a Land Rover Parenti ambulance. A new arrival at my household. In fact, there's even a two-part episode on this. Uh, links are in the description. So, we've got a whole bunch of different things to do with this. We've got a bunch of deliveries have arrived. The very first thing I want to do, uh, because I have arranged to get a 24 volt alternator for this. They normally came with a 12 and a 24 volt. The owner prior to the one, to the previous owner, uh, he removed the 24 volt alternator out of the system. So I plan to reinstate that, but we need to test to see if the system works. Now I have briefly done a bit of a, uh, a bit of a test. I've got a couple of new batteries I've just bought and a bunch of battery terminals. So I think we'll hook them up properly and see if the 24 volt system works. Um, and then we've got a whole bunch of other stuff we've got to figure out. We also camped in this on the way back, which explains some of the stuff that's in here and the clothing and things that are stuffed into the boxes. Uh, a lot of that's got to come out and get washed. So we've only had it here a few days, um, but I'm in a bit of a rush to get some important stuff done, hence the radiator caps and washer motors because Vic Roads has brought in a new law where all vehicle transfers, regardless of who they come from, need a roadworthy. So we need to get this pick and span ready for a roadworthy. And I need to stop this bag blowing away in the wind. So we've got to get it roadied. Yay. All right. So let's, uh, let's get on with the battery side of things and then we might investigate the washer. All right, so before we go cracking open the battery bay, I know pretty much what I've got to do. It's a 24 volt system, and they use two 12 volt batteries, which means they're in series. So we're gonna need a link cable, and silly me, forgot to buy a hunk of heavy cable before I left. So I have this clip that I did something with years ago, it's off a jump pack, but the cable is of a bad appreciable size. It looks like it's uh, this I've had it long enough. It was before the days where they the Chinese started using um, uh, Copper coated aluminium cable It's actually looks like it's actual copper cable So we might uh, trim this off and uh, hook this in make our little 24 volt link cable out of this and uh, Start from that So I need to find all my tools And get cracking now keep in mind. I only got back a couple of days ago from doing all this stuff and uh, I'm actually really sore between my limited energy levels with multiple sclerosis and the something like 900 K's we had to drive um, we used about 300 litres of diesel <laughs> between the two vehicles so um, it's been a long day but this is also where you feel a little ripped off with cable there's not actually a lot in there, it's all insulation. But this should work to make a link cable and I can, with these terminals I can upgrade and make another one later. Wow, that is a lot of plastic. <laughs> yeah, but crucially that should carry enough current to blow the fuse or the main 24 volt breaker that's behind the passenger seat <clears throat> now with an ambulance like this I don't expect to have a huge audience because to my understanding there was only 93 of these variants made I think there was about a thousand six wheel drives all up and only 93 of which were ambulances all right we've got our screw terminals here need to find my Barco ratchet spanner that fits it um, I think these are either 10 or 13 mil. Where are we? Um, that feels right, and that is an 11, just to prove me wrong. All right, give me a minute to check my phone, and we will continue. All right, I thought I'd turn notifications off on my phone for my YouTube channel, but apparently I had not. I have now, though. That was just a notification of a spammy post. Somebody offering to set me up with an auto profit website. Um, I don't know what it's all about, but still, spammy stuff. This might not be the best connection, if 
but uh, this should at least tell us if things work and I'll get a better quality hunk of wire for this later yeah okay so huh. this might not actually work I might need to find some thicker cable for these um, let me wrap around the shed see what I can find all right well I couldn't find anything thicker and I'm about to have a visitor too so I'm gonna try a bodgy trick here just to get this working all right well my visitor took altogether much longer than I thought so I did a little bit while I was yakking to him we can pull out the 24 volt batteries here and uh, we can see this is just the cheapest batteries that super cheap auto had a couple of little baby guys um, I'm hoping that frame is not grounded it probably is in which case that could be bad but um, we'll put something in there to hold them down soon but anyway that is the little link cable we're making it's not perfect and these terminals were enough to actually attach it so we can test 24 volt system so we can put our lid back on here we'll slide the whole thing in and put our lock pin back in it's difficult to do one-handed and still get everything to line up come on at least these batteries are a bit lighter it's a little easier to handle so, oh, get in there pin the cable is a bit restricted there we go it'll probably line up eventually there we go I should stop it coming out so now we can go around the side here into the back and our 12 volt uh, or 24 volt isolation switch is on that's oh, actually a circuit breaker there is a voltmeter in there as well which now means now originally what I did here as I went oh no nothing's working why are none of the switches working turn the master on then turn the ceiling lights on and our ceiling lights work so if we go back here and we go blackout lights they red blackout lights with one light that's a little bit iffy we'll work that out later um, we now have scan left and right lights so our light around the side here works um, that works well and we have our rear loading lights which are these guys they work well and um, yeah and then all these other lights work on the side where the original cabinets were there's the 24 volt lines there for those lower lights um, one of those I had on my desk and modified to run some LEDs I'm experimenting with that at the moment um, all the suction lines and stuff these pods are here were where the suction pumps were in there um, and also some of the electrics the oxygen tank used to sit right on the corner here and that feeds through pipes to these fittings on the side um, I assume there would have been a regulator involved in that. Um, those are probably going to get retrofitted. Uh, all this stuff is going to come off. Um, so yeah, we have 24 volts. Um, I've got to get underneath and clean up the oil around the bell housing and stuff before we get a roadie. I've got a fire extinguisher to put in. And crucially a first aid kit because we are technically in an ambulance. Somebody is going to come running up to us one day and go, we need some first aid. So... We'll put a decent sized first aid kit in here and I've added a snake bite bandage to that too crucially um, because I'm teaching my six year old apprentice how to do snake bite bandages. We've done it once before. We're going to have a refresher each year just so she gets the hang of it. Um, I've got the dicky seat removed too. We're going to just see how that fits in here in a minute now that we have lights. So uh, actually let's go and get that now and see what we can do with it. All right, so we've got the dicky seat. We're going to see what we can do with it. Um, I'll turn on some lights in here now I'm not quite sure how this used to affix to anything um, we do have some of the original timber pieces for this but um, none of them really line up with these holes but I'm pretty sure the dicky seats would sit level with this section and hinge over there so I'm not sure how we're going to do that and that is just fiberglass in there there's a gap so we may need to engineer something a little stronger so let me go and position these and see if they fit all right so the dicky seat here has been actually been handmade there's actually hand markings on here and they're all hand inserted pop rivets um so this seat oh, that's not sitting in the right spot this seat here obviously 
is meant to fit over here, but and it does have a hinge on the back of about the right width here. So um, this hinge here, and it covers that hole nicely. So I think that from all the photos I've seen, because I don't have any personal experience with ambulances of this style, um, that should be where it fits. So I reckon I'll probably need to put like a piece of steel bar across here to try and reinforce that. And that might be one of these bolt holes here might be responsible for that. There's a whole lot of extra stuff that was already in here. So I think there's been a storage box there. Um, so this seat might sit there and this back piece is obviously meant to swing out of the way. So we might need to re-engineer something like that. Uh, I am getting very tired. So my plans of just bolting this back down and using it straight away, probably not an option and actually probably not legal to use or even have installed anyway. So I might go and have a chat to my automotive engineer mate and see what his opinion is. Um, we may actually be able to do something legal for that. Um, but yeah, if we do put it in there, we can't use it while we're traveling. It would be just nice as an armchair in the back here, really. Um, that doesn't float around when we take hard corners. And yeah, the, the Mrs. Luck's taking the roundabouts a little fast for this. So hopefully we can convince her to slow down a smidgen. Um, so yeah. Oh, haha. My switch panel is lit up here. I wonder if I can turn it now that that's the ceiling lights are on yep blackout works oh so that is a double pole switched master switch okay that's nice to know so that's uh the switching circuit's a little weird like that but yeah <sighs> i keep yawning i am very tired now i was going to put some air into this and unload that air line I think I've probably got just enough time in the day to do that. And then I think I'm going to be done for energy. In fact, I think I'm probably done for energy now. I've done far too much today already. Um, as I've said in many of my videos, multiple sclerosis does kind of kick my ass a little bit sometimes. So, yeah, I think we'll probably settle for some cleaning. I might get out actually. What I might be able to do without too much effort I might just get a bit of spray and wipe out here and give it a bit of a wipe down and see how much of these marks come off. Um, particular concern, there's a sneeze mark or something on here. I'd really like to clean that first. Um, and it looks like there's been a bit of liquid damage or something around these, or that might be part and parcel of the sneeze or... Yeah, it's just there's, there's dirt and dust and stuff on everything. So we want to get it nice and clean to start with. Um, the other thing we're going to try and do is peel off this vinyl and do something. We might even get like a vinyl wrapping put in over the top of all of this. Um, that stuff, that glue, I got no idea how we're gonna get that off um, or if we can even get that off without using a solvent that doesn't dissolve the fiberglass. So um, that is gonna require some research. There's nice captive bolts behind or captive nuts behind all these little points along here where the original frames went in uh, for the gurneys and stretches and shit. So. We'll fix that up at some point. These bump rails here, I don't know if we'll leave them in or rip them out. Um, there is one that's been removed on the roof, um, but we'll, uh, we'll probably put that one back on. That is up in the cupboard somewhere. This guy, the rubber's really hard on this, so I think they're just bump rails. This, I think it's designed to have a little fitting go in and turn around, because I think those two things trigger a buzzer somewhere. In fact, I might even find something conductive and see if I can set the buzzer off. I might have a play with that. Give me a minute. All right, so I pulled a bit of the rubber stripping out here and I tried to touch this little strip to that little wire there. Um, and then I touched something to here and it blew a fuse. Um, I heard it go pop in the fuse box. So clearly not meant to short out like that, but looking at the construction here, I think if we simply push on that, that rubber strip makes connection with that rail in there. So I think that's how that's meant to work. So if we push all this back in carefully here, we can put that back in situ. I reckon if I go and find my pack of glass fuses and change a fuse, I think all we do is we just push in that rail and that's all we do to set that off. So um, yeah, let me go and have a look at the fuses up in here. I'm sure one of those will be blown. I'm going to go and get a torch. I think it might be this guy though. 
So let me go get my glass fuses and find one. All right, I do have a more in-depth box of fuses kicking around, but uh, this is what I have on me. I can never remember how they open. I've got some glass fuses in there. Let's have a look up here. Pick that camera up. Um, buzzer and suction pump. So it might be that one. It might be the one. So buzzer, suction pump, and that is, it literally says buzzer on the roof, so I reckon that's going to be our fuse. Let's see if I can get my Leatherman out one handed and extract this fuse without crushing it or any of the others. Oh my, there we go. Right, so let's have a look here. It's definitely a blown fuse. It, what rating is it? Um, looks like a 10 amp. Okay. Do I have a 10 amp fuse in here? Let's have a look. These are... It's uh, probably a 5 amp. That'll do. It's a little bit lower, but we're not running a suction pump anymore. So let's plonk you in there. Let's go over here and see what happens. Okay. Buzzer is not activating, but I don't know if there's a buzzer connected anywhere. There's certainly power connected to that on the correct circuit. I just don't know where the buzzer is meant to be. Anywhere along here. No. Okay, so I'd say the circuit is active. I don't know where the buzzer is. Um, oh, heater fan. Hello. All right, so I'm still working out all the circuits on this. So buzzers are no go for the moment. Um, heater fan interests me. I just noticed there's actually a, a shroud on here. So I could take all this out and actually pull that hole circuit panel out and get behind it that's nice um i'm thinking at some point we're gonna have to remove this cowl oh there's lots of stuff to do do our low power lights work not unless we turn on another switch apparently oh hang on ceiling lights on no ah master switch on then our low power lights are a separate circuit in that as well that's cool all right um yeah all right. Oh, that's right. I turned the master switch off when I got out of this thing before. So, turn master switch off. Well, I think I'm a bit done for energy for the day, but this is... Yeah, that's right. We were going to get some spray and wipe. That's what we were going to do. I'm sorry this is a bit disoriented, guys. Um, I'm still just getting familiar with where everything is and all the intricacies of this thing. A lot of the videos you see of mine, I've already done this stuff before I start filming. Uh, this time... So many people have expressed interest in this, and this is a bit of a rare vehicle, so I'm going over in real detail and just examining everything um, before I do any real kind of mods. I need to be knowledgeable on what I'm doing before I really do it. Um, blowing a fuse is not a huge issue. Um, yeah, that guy, we don't really need that. That can go on the tray up there. So, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is take a big selection of my glass fuses, and uh, store them on board. We've also got to find a jack and wheel brace and a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So yeah, let's get some spray and wipe and see what this place starts to look like. All right, sneeze print attempt one. Let some of that stuff soak into it. See what we get. Well, it helps a bit. I think we need another round. could be a long day. It's coming through a little bit better each time. Several passes will probably get it. All right, so the sneeze print is gonna come off. That is nice. All right, and some of the drip marks from it. All right, Let's see what else we can do. All right, so sneeze mark gone. But the scuffs and bumps and stuff uh, remain. I'm gonna, probably going to need a good buffing wheel for that. Um, the dirt and grime and stuff. You probably notice all this is clean in here. Well, not as clean as it could be. But the dirt and stuff that's stuck on here, that's lifting off nicely. Um, to give you some of a, sort of an idea, this is the 
bright yellow cleaning cloth I started with about 10 minutes ago um, or even five minutes ago so yeah um, there's a lot of caked on dirt in here um, but we should be able to get that up and out this stuff oh, I really want to just rip this out but that looks ho horrible and horrendous I might bit of I don't expect that this will actually work but no that glue is going to need something serious to get off there or just to reapply some fresh coat over the top and stick some fresh vinyl on here um because this is giving me the shit so I'm almost going to put a screw in there to hold that up but uh yeah so all this shit along the rails is going to be all right um for comparison we can move some stuff over here and have a look at this side um it doesn't look real good but that stuff does clean up so that's good there's obviously been a little bit of water sitting there at some point and it's collected dust or dirt so yeah um we should be able to get this space relatively clean the scuffs and things i think i can probably buff them out i can probably polish them down a bit uh and we'll get it looking like nice and clean uh the switch panels i'm gonna actually have to pull them off and give them a good scrub with a toothbrush or something that is just going to take time um but it's starting to smell a little bit less like formaldehyde and dirt in here so that is nice um yeah but there's still going to be quite a bit to do i think i agree with the original owner i think we're just going to part with this thing i don't know if there's any gas in the system um if the oil has if the compressor has not moved for a while the oil may have leaked away from the cylinder seals and it might have leaked all its gas out anyway so um yeah i don't think i'm going to pull this off tonight i think we're going to call this wraps for a bit um but just a first initial look at the minor point in here and a bit of a test and a clean i'd like to make this buzzer rail work though that would be nice because you know if at some point somebody's in the cab and somebody's in here we can go beep 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 hey i want your attention i think that would actually be kind of useful uh, especially considering my apprentice's propensity to get in here um, if we teach her how to use the buzzer rail she can alert us if for some reason we go to drive off she's hiding in the back and this is shut um so yeah well, i could just stick a pir in here that comes on with the ignition and we'd know as soon as somebody's in here lots of potential anyway so i actually need to remove all our dirty clothes from the trip to pick this up i need to pull them out take them inside and wash them so um i think i'm going to call this wraps for a little quickie episode and uh, i'll see you all in the next one hopefully i'll be wearing some clean clothes so uh yeah hope you'll like the quick little explore there's going to be plenty more on this there's going to be more argo episodes there's going to be more getting out bush and uh some more electronic stuff you know what, have at it in the comments. Let me know sort of what you want to see more of. I'm not making money off this, but I do like to see people enjoying the content. So yeah, give us your opinion over what sort of content you guys like to see. So see you later. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with the next one.